Welcome to another Debaco University video, here looking at glass as evidence involved with crime scenes. So first off, well, what is glass? We need to define what that is. And while glass may not have a specific melting point, it will soften over a temperature range. And that can be important where arson or high heat might be involved with a particular crime scene. Glass is also a uniform amorphous solid, which means it has a regular atomic structure, which causes it to break at a variety of fraction patterns, which can vary based on impact, um, uh, force of impact, angle of impact, and also the type of glass. So how is glass used in forensic science? Well, small fragments can be used as trace evidence to link objects and people through, through a crime scene reconstruction process. And that can be involved with directly, for example, where a bullet is piercing a, a piece of glass, or sometimes even accidental, where something might be knocked over uh, and broken, and those uh, trace elements might be picked up uh, by the person at the scene and found later by an investigator on in their clothing or potentially within their shoes. This is often present in like uh, places that are robs or bur burglaries or hit and run accidents as well. So it's important to keep in mind of this glass evidence. Now, in the actual crime scene, where may it be used? Well, automobile accidents, uh, where a broken headlight or even windshield glass um, could be fractured or damaged. A store break-in, as I mentioned, where shards of, of window glass uh, with fibers or blood on them can also help link a person to a scene. Shots fired into a window, the sequence and actual direction of the bullets can often be determined by examining the glass. These small, minute particles of glass may be transferred to a subject's shoes or clothing and can provide a source of trace evidence linking the suspect to the actual crime scene. This is, uh, again, helpful, but keep in mind that you really have to be looking for these very small, small pieces, these trace evidence. When we're collecting a uh, glass as investigators, it's important we do so uh, in a way that tries to collect as many samples as possible, but it's also protective uh, to you. We also want to, in that process, want to collect these standard reference glass should be taken from the crime scene. We're looking about an inch um, square. We want to package it in a solid container to prevent breakage and indicate interior and exterior surfaces if possible. The presence of dirt, paint, grease, or putty may help identify the inside and outside surfaces if they're known. So if you're looking at a piece of glass, if maybe a window and you know where the outside is, make note of, of what side that is on the glass that you're collecting. I want to preserve garments uh, with glass on it, and that can include shoes, pants, um, even um, shirts, anything that may have that potential for carrying that trace evidence. All broken glass must be recovered and submitted to analysis uh, when direction of impact is desired in as many pieces as possible to help make that process as, as simplified as can be. Now, when we get these pieces of glass evidence, well, when the suspect and crime scene fragments are assembled and physically fit together, and this can be a very time-consuming process, comparisons of this type uh, do require the piecing of these irregularities in the broken glass, as well as matching all these and, uh, irregularities and striations on the broken surfaces. The possibility that two pieces of glass originating from different sources will fit together exactly is unlikely, and this is a way to exclude other sources from physical consideration. Unfortunately, most glass evidence is either too fragmented or too minute to permit a comparison of this type. And that's part of the reason why it's so important to try to collect as many uh, pieces as possible. It gets a little more confusing if you have a window that's broken into, and then, for example, a wine glass breaks or some other form of glass, a mirror is shattered. You kind of get those mixing um, of the two pieces there. Now when we're comparing our glass uh, samples, the goal is to find and measure the properties that will associate one glass fragment to another while minimizing or limiting the possibility exist of other sources. Due to common occurrences of glass, it can present quite a challenge. So even though there's glasses of different types, uh, it can be a difficult comparison to make there. There are methods, so just keep that in mind that while this will help you tell part of the story, it's not going to be the one defining factor. Uh, it's going to take probably other um, ways of collecting of other evidence, and this will be one component, which could be a very important component, which is why uh, when collecting samples, we want to be very mindful of ensuring we're collecting a quality sample. 